All right, folks, we're on a covert mission to bring in our next project into home base. Home base being this complete disaster of a work area. The missus thinks I'm out doing projects. However, the missus doesn't understand the importance of the real projects. Phase one, move this ridiculous table out of the way so I can open the garage and actually get something in here. And yes, that is a downpipe for a Duramax diesel. If you like Duramax diesels, Stay tuned, because I may or may not be doing some work at a later date. Stand by. Stay behind here where it's safe, while I move the picnic table. Uh, uh, uh. Gotta move the planter. Phase one complete. On to phase two. Operation Pecker Control. Secure the peckers. Secured. Enter the pecker complex. Get the peckers out of the way. Feed the peckers. Count the peckers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Pecker count complete. Phase two complete. Phase three infiltrate <laughs> junk storage area and figure out how to get the next project out. I believe the leaf sucker 9000 is going to have to be moved. Wish me luck. <laughs> Phase three complete, phase four, gather oxygen and make sure machine is in neutral position. Not neutral, neutral. Begin phase five. Yeah, yeah. Rolls pretty nice, but I'm definitely gonna need a bachyotomy after this. Perhaps a bachyectomy. Oh, we're on a hill. There. Oh, sh Wrong way. Go back up the hill. Back up the hill. Here comes a hill in our favor. Oh, boy. Easy, girl. Easy, girl. Phase 12. Bring home. Start it. 895.6.3. We're almost home. Entering threshold. <sighs> Operation ABC XYZ.3 is complete. Greetings, folks. Welcome back to the Tractor Fellow Show, where we know nothing about tractors. Hopefully you enjoyed watching that intro as much as I did making it. That was, <laughs> that was fun. And uh, making a fool out of myself. Up for... Our exploration and rehabilitation today is a John Deere LT160 automatic. If I had to guess, automatic meant a hydrostatic transmission. And judging from the pedals over here, I think we can agree. All right, let's get the boring part over with. That being the intro. Keys, check. Stop. Run, no. Oh, look at that. You want to go backward while running the deck? Put it in that position, I would have to assume. Normal on, crank, battery dead. No surprise there. Parking brake, gonna to have to learn how that works because it doesn't move. On the other side, we have the raise and lower deck, which sadly we do not have, judging from this little uh, diagram here. I'm assuming that's, oh, that is cutting, cutting height. Also, we don't have to worry about because we have no mower deck. This appears to be the PTO on switch. We have an hour meter, which I will be very interested to see how many hours we have on this, to be perfectly honest. And then we have a mystery switch. Perhaps the mystery switch is a replacement for the cranking position on the key cylinder. 
I don't know. We will find out. Underneath the butt, we have our we have our seat switch, which is disconnected and bypassed. Not surprised. You see that a lot. We have a U-bolt uh, for the seat hinge, as well as a normal seat hinge pin. That's okay. Sometimes you got to use what you got to use. Well, isn't that interesting? May 5th, 1993. I guess we can say that's around the time this was probably made. And now we come to the frightening part. What's in the tank? We can assume that's a one-way check valve. Cannot see down there. Okay, are we ready for the sniff test? <laughs> It's tech stain. Oh, just as I feared. All right, I'm gonna take a few minutes to rehabilitate my trach, and we'll go from there. Let's do a hood pop. Oh, well, that's unfortunate, but that's okay. It's not gonna be perfect. After all, this was free. I should note that, uh, do we have hinges? Okay, we do not have hinges. I have some dear friends that led me onto this machine, and Thank you, dear friends. You know who you are. Quick background story. You can't just rehabilitate a machine without knowing its history. This belonged to a nice elderly couple. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, husband, uh, he passed away. And when something breaks and he's tired of working on it, tired of getting it running, he goes and buys something new. Perfectly acceptable. When he went and bought his replacement, this sat in the backyard for years. She decided after some time that she wanted to get rid of it and... Here we have it. So I'm very thankful to all people involved that allowed me to get this here, my wife included, for letting me get the trailer and vehicle and go up to where I had to go to get it. Now that my sentimental story is done, let's continue on. Under the hood, maybe it'll tell us a story. First of all, do we have any spin? Okay, good. I'm not going to move it further than that. We know it's not locked up. Battery date, June of 18. So that's not that old. That's one plus nine, carry the four, nine or six, eight, uh, four years ago. Okay. So uh, four years isn't so bad for a battery. In all honesty, I might put a charger on this after I disconnect the leads and see if we can throw some uh, amperage back into that. We have a bit of a, you know, sitting in the woods mess here. Get my shop back and trash can. We'll get rid of that. This would most likely be headlights. To go to our hood there. Let's have a quick sample of the oil. It is black, which is fairly normal. Sniff test. A little bit of gas, but you know what? Carburetor probably had gas in it and may have leaked down into the crankcase over the years. No big deal. This looks like a fuel pump. Is that a fuel pump? It is. Check out our filter there. Okay. Filter, fuel pump. If we get into a situation where it fires and then dies repeatedly and we can't figure out why the heck we're starving for fuel, investigate. Starter motor. Yep, it's a starter motor. According to our diagram here, we have brake on top. Check. Forward. Check. Reverse. Check. Uh, I would like to clear this up, maybe get me a little more instruction on how the parking brake works. This says this pedal raises and lowers. I am not understanding fully how that works because I do not have the mower of this vintage. This is my sweetheart, so lovingly known as the Jolly Green Giant, which has a very simple lever to raise and lower the mower deck. I'll have to read up on how this actually works. Or, you know what? Somebody could throw in the comments for me. <laughs> like that actually works. Engine. Is this a Kohler command? Sorry, I just got excited because uh, the Jolly Green Giant, who you just met, has a Kohler command, and it is a CV460, similar to a CV460. Now, this engine meets US EPA 2004 and California 2006 emission rigs. All right, so if this engine meets 2004 and 2006 emission regulations, then that seat code is for an older seat. And I'm an idiot. This engine is certified to operate on unleaded gasoline. Well, we should put leaded gasoline in and see what happens. Actually, did you know 
that if you put leaded gasoline in an unleaded gasoline engine, you will most likely have issues with your valve train because engines designed to run on leaded gasoline the valves pound the seat a different way to break up and get rid of lead deposits. Interesting information, huh? Let's continue. Air filter. We have an air filter. It looks just like the filter from the Jolly Green Giant. You got your blower in the shroud. Kind of pressurizes this area, forces air into the engine a little bit. Fuel shutoff solenoid on our carburetor. We'll probably tear into that and see if we can destroy it at a later time. Holy cow. Ew. Overhead valve. Good for you, Kohler. Good for you. I believe this is when Kohler was good. Somebody told me Kohler was sold overseas and they've gone downhill, which is sad. Now I'm just jabbering because I'm excited. I should probably continue on before I lose half my audience. Oh, already gone. Right, let's do a quick underneathy checky. Ouch. Mower belt's gone. No surprise there since we have no mower deck. Drive belt. Present. Excellent. That means we should be able to move. Pending the hydrostatic drive is not grenaded internally. Speaking of grenaded internally, place your bets in the comments. Just right down there. Why did this get parked? Look at that front cross member. Holy crap. Why not just put that in a pickup truck? Continuing on, we have leftover chains and a mount. We have other hardware here. I'm assuming that's engage and disengage for the mower. And the belt condition. Not the best, but I bet we could get a few miles out of it. Hey, look. Transmission's still there. That is a bonus. Cross your fingers that it moves. Keep them crossed until I tell you. That's got a PTO icon on it. I'm assuming this means PTO on. And I am seeing here that we are missing some type of connector. If I had to guess, that was an indicator. PTO is turned on. So we may have to figure out how to jump that out if it causes problems in the future. Also, here's our momentary switch. And you can see the big red wire and the black wire there. They're going down to these terminals here. That's a bit nibbled through. That's been a bit nibbled on. That is burnt. So if I had to guess, they're bypassing what looks like buried under these leaves. Probably the original starter solenoid. We'll explore that later. Welcome back, folks. It is another day. Don't you just love fluorescent lights in the winter? They do really well. Hey, by the way, you like my setup? Cable management is a little annoying, but you can move your light wherever you want. I suppose it doesn't really matter if uh, the lights don't actually work. Anyway, I whipped out the shop vac. Let's do some cleaning. All right, Operation Suck It is complete. We have a nice cleaned up area. I'm gonna go ahead and put a charger on the battery, see if we can bring it back to life. Charger is going. This thing is probably older than I am, but the nice thing about the old ones, they don't require a charge to initialize. So if you have a battery that's completely dead AF, you can just plug this in and it'll start throwing current at it regardless of its state. And yes, don't worry, I'll clean the terminals. Right now I have it connected directly to the lead. What I'd like to do next is pull the spark plug. Somewhere hiding in here is a spark plug. I'm going to use the official spark plug wire pliers. Because it's cold. Oh boy. Got a lot of buildup in there. We might be taking a shroud off to clean those fins. If your fins are clogged like that, you don't have any airflow. No airflow means overheating. So I took a screwdriver and cleaned up around the plug so we don't get a bunch of stuff inside the cylinder. What have we here? A little bit of carbon, possibly from some oil consumption. Um, otherwise, it is. There is some tan color in there, so that's a good thing. All right, let's go clean it up. Cold fingers today. Of course, the weekend comes and what do you know? It gets frigid outside. Grill brush, check. I remember when I was hanging out at my grandparents' house. My grandpa was always a very mechanical person. We called him Papa. 
And back behind their house, he had an old straight six that came out of a truck that he and his son, my uncle, were working on at one point. So one day, I'm in swimming in their swimming pool, and I hop out and start running around because, you know, I'm a kid. And, you know, that's what kids do, or, well, what kids used to do, I guess. And I found this in line six. I asked if I could just start wrenching around with it, playing with it. So I'm down in the garage, I grab a couple tools, I go out and I pull the starter motor off of it. Don't ask me why, but that's what I did. He helps me get a battery and a couple of cables, and we hook the battery and cables up to it and it, it doesn't really do anything. So he says, well, what? you know what, why don't you go ahead and tear it apart? Sure, Papa, I'll tear it apart. You know, a long cylinder, right? And you've got the two screws, the two bolts at the very end that essentially hold the entire thing together. Well, one of those broke, but the other one came free. Anyway, long story short, I tear it apart and I clean up the armature, I think is what it's called, where the brushes contact. Is that the armature? I'll have to look it up. I'll, I'll write it down here, what it's actually called. So I clean that up with some sandpaper and we get it all back together and the springs that hold the brushes tight to the armature are broken. They're all just rusted away because this inline six was sitting outside, right? It had been sitting there for years. So I said, well, Papa, do you have any rubber bands? And he says, yes, Aaron, I do. Oh, hey, there you go. Aaron, that's my name. So he grabs me a rubber band and I took the rubber band and I wrapped it around the brushes to hold them tight to the armature. That one bolt that I broke, he brazed it with a torch and some brazing wire. We put that starter back together. We hooked it up to battery, and I'll be darned if that thing didn't start spinning. Isn't that funny, the things that you remember as a kid? I think he was proud of me, and I was proud of me too. <laughs> I was proud of our work together and uh, getting that, that starter motor running. That was a fun time. And that man is 97 years old now. Oh, don't take the brush you cleaned a chainsaw with and try to dust your newly reconditioned spark plug. Let's get a little compressed air on the situation. Might as well be brand new. Next thing I'd like to do is blast a little PB in the cylinder. Is it locked up? Nope. Does that mean it's well lubricated? Absolutely not. We're gonna turn up the pump for this. Oh yeah. There we go. I bet that cylinder will appreciate that. And let's do a quick spin test. Oh, what the heck is that? Oh, we're good. Just making sure we can do a full 720, not just 360. Make sure everything opens and closes. And we don't have any sticky valves or anything like that interfering. Yeah, feels good actually. No abnormal knocking or ticking when we go back and forth. Alright, charger number two. This charger I'm not really impressed with because sometimes it tries to boil batteries. And other times it works pretty well. The only other thing I don't like about it is it has to read some type of voltage in order to turn on. It just won't charge nothing. So what I did is I attached it to our prehistoric charger so it thinks there's voltage, turned it on, and we should be good to go. All right, let's see if we can spit PP Blaster everywhere. Oh, it wants to. Sounds a little rough, probably because we're running on zero volts right now. Probably would help if we cleaned up the terminals on those batteries. Battery nut pliers. Who knew they existed? Whether or not they're beneficial to us today will be a different story. Oh my, fingers are cold. Too excited to care. And it also makes this annoying noise. those in about five seconds. Hardware, clean. Wires, shiny. Terminals, shiny. All right, hooked back up. Let's try again. And go. Nope. 
All right, good morning. It is a new day. This little guy's been on there all night. It automatically takes down the amount of current required as the battery charges. So we'll see if we can get some spin out of this now. If not, it's one of two things. Either the battery froze one of these winters because it had no charge and it's dead, or two, we have high resistance. So let's see what happens. Well, that's cool. I don't know how robust the battery is, but that is pretty sweet. And you can see we drew some current, so the charger went back up and it's gonna charge it back again. I am excited. All right, what do you do? What do you say we do a quick spark test? Ignition on. I did not hear any clicking from the fuel solenoid. Oh, I think I just had to wake it up. Ignition on. Spark plug ready. Light off. And go. No way. This thing's gonna run. Let's see if we can make it pop. First of all, plug in -y. All right. Spark plug engaged. Quick shot of PB on this 30 mile long. Oh, wow, there we go. There's all the PB. Ah, yes. Uh, let's not lose that. How are we looking down there? Yeah. Cleanish for the most part. All right, ether time. Starting fluid of the day gum out with top end lubricant for those concerned about the. Lubrication of the valve train. That's a lot. Let's see if our battery has enough juice. It popped. Round two with the boost. All right, here we go. There we have it. And that stinks. I think she just needed a little wake up, plus I didn't have the throttle up because I'm super smart. But we have a runner. All right. So now that we know the engine runs, uh, we need to figure out how much Dextane is actually in this machine. And my plan is to shine a flashlight into the tank and cross my fingers that I can actually see something in the back here, which I cannot at all. See over there on the right? Looks like we have about, I don't know, half inch. Half inch of deck stain or so. All right, so I can't figure out how to take the gas tank off and I really don't want to take the gas tank off even though it'd be easier to turn the thing upside down and dump it out. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna slaughter two birds with one rock, okay? We're going to fire the engine up. I'm gonna run it off of some type of can, all right, and we're going to disconnect the fuel line here at the carburetor, and we're going to run the engine off the aux tank, and we're going to see if the fuel pump works. That's one bird, and the second bird will be, we'll use the fuel pump if the first bird is successful to see if we can pump out the tank. And yes, I have a tripod now. Best day ever. All right, first... Let's do the easy part and pull this off with the incorrect tool. Yeah, need some different pliers. Just in case we get a, a leaker here. Second incorrect tool. I, oh no, this is the correct tool, if I do say so myself. Fuel line, work with me here. It doesn't really matter whether or not I want to do this method of draining the tank because, oh look at that. Watch, it's going to start pouring fuel and not stop. Oh yeah, we're free. 
we are free. There it is. Well, I think I found a good storage container. Anyone thirsty? That should work. I'm gonna get myself a bungee cord. All right, so here we are. We have our catch jar securely bungeed to the front axle. We have our feed securely bungeed to the engine and attached to the carburetor right in there. This may give us a third bird with one stone. That being whether or not the carburetor is actually going to uh, carburate into the engine. I'm not freaking out, you're freaking out. All right, let's go. Get us a little bit of 89 recreation up here in this bad situation. Either the bowl is taking the fuel or it's all draining into the crankcase. That fuel shut off solenoid works. It may just be filling up the bowl. Okay, it's stopped. That means our bowl is full. Bowl full. Make sure it's not pouring gas down there. Nope, we're good. Oh boy, I'm excited. Should have worn my Crocs for this. Dude, that was awesome. Until the securing cord fell off. Also, we are throwing out that PB blaster. You need to breathe. Let's crack a window. All right, get some circulation up in this asphyxiation. Ignish. gas in the tank. <laughs> that was awesome. So we just killed three birds with one boulder, okay? We chucked the boulder and we found out, A, the fuel pump works. Two, we pumped out the old stuff and I put a little fresh, oh, that smells. I put a little fresh stuff in there, pumped that through as well. And three, we found out that the carburetor will actually carburate. We are getting fuel atomization in some strange way, shape, or form after this baby's been sitting for who knows how long. I'm gonna fire it up one more time. I wanna see if the idle circuit works as well. And then if it does, uh, maybe, just maybe, we'll try to creep forward and backward. Hercules with the creepy glowing eyes has joined us. There, not so creepy, just cute. I put a little bit of fuel back in the funnel there. Uh, our catch bottle is in a safe location that it won't get run over and we're just gonna creep it forward and creep it back. idle circuit. Sweet. I bet we can turn that up just a hair and it'll be fine, which I will do right now.
How cool, you guys. How cool. Titan thinks so, too. Actually, he's just trying to find a special place to put a stick where he thinks I'll grab it. Aren't you little devil eyes? I bet we put some sea foam in this. Run it through the carb. You know what we're going to do now? We're going to put some sea foam in this and run it through the carb. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in on our safety lesson of the day. Proper fuel storage. Glassware is never an acceptable media to store your fuel in. Glassware at any time could break from things like vibrations or sudden impacts. Thanks for tuning in on today's safety lesson, fuel storage. All right, seriously though, it was fun at the start. That was dumb. So, but you know what? Sometimes I don't make the right decisions. Anyway, we have a sweet running machine. Next step, we're gonna go ahead and pull that shroud off and we're gonna clean up the fins on the cylinder and uh, take a look, make sure we don't have any nests in there. All right, it was later that day. Good news is I stole a propane tank off our camper. Bad news is my garage smells like deck stain. Poor kitty. Wants to be itched. The other good news is that uh, the deck stain should offer ample protection for this mint concrete that I have going on here. Everybody meet Apollo. Meow. Apollo, meet everybody. This is our outdoor kitty. He refuses to live inside. However, he is incessant on getting his evening itchies. We've tried to bring him in, and he just makes that desperation meow noise and despises it until we let him back out. Yeah, you're a good boy. All right, let's go back out. Come on. Come on, puss. All right. See you later. All right, we're blazing. Most of the flammable sources are out of the way. Okay, what do we have here? Okay, well, if this would come off, that would be really cool. Ouch. Cold fingers, not a huge fan. Down to about 15F this evening. The missus says, let's go out and play. You can play in the garage and I'll play in the horse barn. And I was just like, well, not really going to argue with that. Oh, she go. All right. I say that a lot. All right. Time to keep going. All right. Ow, dang it. I need to move that. So what I'm going to do as I take each screw out is set it in this tray in the shape of this cover. So that way I know which goes where because these are not all the same size. Surprise, surprise. What a nice variety of sizes. Perfect for reassembly and remembering exactly where everything went. No, not at all. And lift. Just a side note, check out that. Perhaps this is for the charging system? I don't know. The charging system on the engine on mine is underneath here in the form of a stator. Coils over here, so what's that little guy do? I don't know. Some annoying news. We can't really get to those fins down yonder. 
unless we remove this shield and that shield. This one appears to be, what is that? I don't know what that is, unless the starter on the Jolly Green Giant does have a rubber cap on the top of it. Is it necessary? Probably not. Has it been off the top of the starter for years? Most likely. But now he's been returned to his home. <coughs> not even close. Round two, fail. Looks like we're doing it the old fashioned way. And by old fashioned way, I mean not the lazy way. I'll bring you back in 25 minutes when I get that off. I see we are catching on this little tab over here. If I had to guess, that's probably a lift hook for when they install the engine into the chassis. All right, spark plug boot. I'm gonna cut myself. Nope, got lucky. There we go. Look at that. Oh, nasty. That is one goo encapsulated device right there, but never gonna rust. And as we thought, that is just packed full of nasty. All right, there's this other cover out of here. That one is just as bad. Not entirely sure where the source of all this goo is coming from. It looks like oil, and it's very possible that it's a uh, valve cover gasket. I think what I'm going to do for now is just clean this up and then we'll get it back together and then after we run it for some time we'll just monitor for drips of oil or anything like that. Maybe we'll just invest in a new gasket and by a new gasket I mean a big old pile of RTV. And we're just going to go ahead and give this baby the breathing airflow she deserves. Will I make you watch me do this entire thing? Nope, not at all. When we were initially running things, I smelled some hot stuff. It's very possible that it was this. Or anything down in here. Uh -huh. Or anything down in here. So, got a little storage spot there for somebody's stuff. We're looking better. <clears throat> cleaned up the top, cleaned up the front. Is it perfect? No. I don't have a pressure washer right now because it's in the butt of winter. Cleaned up those fins. Cleaned up over here. Cleaned up in the spark plug area. I think we're good for reassembly. All right. You remember how nasty that was? Decently cleaned up. Remember how nasty that was? Also decently cleaned up. Is it perfect? Nope. Does that bother me? Nope. Have my tray of specially organized hardware. I pulled off the vent caps. This is a serviceable battery, but the water levels are right up to the top, so I didn't have to add any distilled water. So I made a big mess, right? And I pulled out the shop vac, and I'm going to town on the floor, and I'm like, well, you know, I vacuum my shop once every, I don't know, one to two years. And so I'm going along the corners. I'm like, oh, I'll just keep going. Oh, I hope I don't suck up anything important. What? Where did you come from? My little friend. Look at those clean hands. You guys hear that? Did you know that coyotes have the ability to make themselves sound like there are multiples of them? When in reality, there may only be a few. I'll have to play that back, see if you can catch it. So I went to find something and it took me about 15 minutes. So I really need to address the situation that is my workbench. Well, there we have it again. Greetings folks, welcome back. It is a new evening. The next day at night. What I'd like to do, I don't know how much time I'm going to have today, but I'd like to check this side of the lighting harness. 
So let's just see if we have any type of continuity. And we do, 12.5 ohms. We can check at least each bulb since I can't figure out how to get these out. Uh, okay, 0.6. And this bulb is open. So that baby's dead, D-E-D. -E -D. Oh look, this one's twisting, what in the world? Oh yeah, look at that thing, it's crusty as can be. Filament check. You can sort of see in there, it's broken. So I have a small collection of light bulbs, and it just so happens I have this one. Oh, no kidding. Look at that. 1156. 1156. That's dumb luck right there. The heads are a bit different, but it should shine bright like a diamond. I have the hood on. And we are plugged in. Let's see if we get lights by just rolling the key forward. Let me know what you see. One click, nothing. Two clicks. Interesting. So we get lights anytime the key is on, unless the key is in the use the PTO in reverse position. Fancy. So I'm trying to put the hood on here because I'd like to take you all for a cruise. Uh, and I feel like there's some hardware missing. I'll show you after I get it together. So here's what I'm talking about. I figure that would have been the hinge point, and there would be something that it would engage, but I thought maybe it was these holes, but it's too, it's too far apart. All right, got the beloved 10 millimeter socket. I really don't think this is it. I'm going to have to find a picture online. Just roll with it anyway. Better to have it plugged into something than plugged into nothing. Now this side is missing that, uh, that black bushing. And check really quick in the stash, see if I have something that uh, we can use as kind of like a spacer. So you guys are going to laugh at me, but uh, so this is, I believe I replaced the shocks on my truck, aka Red Beauty. And uh, when I did, I, I kept the bushings because, well, I'm trying to start a hoard. In a previous project, i taken one of the bushings and cut it in half because I essentially had needed half the thickness of the bushing. Check out how well it fits into this spot. It literally is the perfect spacer for, for this hood. Oh man, how ridiculous is that? I think it's time. Let's see if this works at all. Oh, it does. Uh, just not very well. Air filter's a go. Headlights are a go. That's not supposed to sound like that. Let's go for a cruise. Also, hour meter. Not even 500 hours on this old girl. She's not really that old. Cold start. About 32 degrees this evening. I do have ignition on. Good. Come on now.
over the hill and climb. Like a champ. I feel like this tractor was born yesterday. see the stars but it's a nice evening aside from the car are you ready three two one go oh yeah I saw six oh come on let's go downhill a little bit here we go here we go come on pick it up Come on, make it six. All right, we'll take five. Idle circuit seems all right. Ish. this adorable little meter I picked up. Got it the other day to put in my pickup truck. One last test and then we'll be done. I have no idea if the charging system works. How sweet is that? All right, folks, I think that's gonna call it. We have rehabilitated the John Deere, and honestly, we didn't have to do a whole lot. Just a lot of uh, checks and balances. Put a new bulb in it, uh, and that's it. We, <laughs> we put a light bulb in it. Battery's holding a charge. Charging system is charging at four, 14 volts. Forward and reverse both work. Cruises along at a speedy five miles per hour. I don't know what else to ask for. I mean, this is a great little workhorse for someone who wants to haul around a dump cart all day and play in the garden. So I think the only thing left is in the springtime, when it warms up, we're gonna give this a bath, give it a sweet power washing. And I would also like to figure out what's going on with the hinges up here. Not that it's super critical, but it would be nice to mount the hood a little more proper. I'm just excited. It, it's a great little machine. So again, Thank you for uh, tuning in, hanging out with me. If you find yourself in the future super bored and also super desperate to watch something on YouTube, feel free to tune in again and join me for another adventure. Catch you next time.